Hello, Elk Grove Unified students, families, and staff. I'm Santi Pinkerton from Communications, back with your weekly EGU news to provide you with a district, county, and state update. And on EGU news, we also focus on healthy minds, healthy bodies, and healthy learning. So here's your district update. Please know that we are closely monitoring our current status regarding the spread of COVID-19 on Tuesday this week, this past week, the positive COVID-19 cases per 1,000 dipped to 6.6 and the positivity rate dropped to 4.6% for Sacramento County. Um, you can visit those statistics on the COVID uh, dashboard page, the state's COVID dashboard page, or also on the county's uh, COVID-19 dashboard page as well. So this means that th that's the criteria for moving from the purple tier to the red tier. Now, if we meet the criteria for the red tier again by next Tuesday, September 29th, we should move into the red tier where the color will change on the map from purple to red on that day. Now, we would then be required to continue meeting the red tier criteria for two additional consecutive weeks in order, to, in order for schools to be allowed to reopen for in-person instruction without a waiver. Now, given the more promising downward trend in cases and positivity rate, our best case scenario is that schools may be allowed to open for in-person instruction as early as October 13th. So that being said, the safety precautions for staff and students must be in place prior to schools reopening, including the availability of testing and contact tracing. In working closely with Sacramento County Public Health, we will be expected to still maintain the, and the mandate of wearing masks, uh, face masks, unless an individual has an exemption for health reasons, um, maintain six feet of social distance in all spaces um, to the greatest extent possible, and minimize the potential of mixing groups before, during, and after school. And also we need to make sure we're following hand hygiene as well as other communicable disease prevention measures. Now, district and school officials will be meeting uh, with our uh, labor partners to refine our educational plans and offerings during this transition, uh, during this transition period. And updated plans will be presented to the Board of Education for review and discussion during a workshop on October 14th, which will help us pave a realistic timeline for Elk Grove Unified moving forward. So although October 13th is the county's earliest possible projected date of when schools could reopen, much work lies ahead and supporting our students with greatest needs is a priority. Now parent feedback will continue to be important as well as, uh, as, as we develop our plans and we appreciate everyone's responsiveness to all of the surveys and polls um, these past few months. Thank you. Um, this, is, this information does help us. Um, it helps us determine the best approach Elk Grove Unified can take to um, safely, effectively, and gradually bring our students and staff back to our schools. Now, we will be providing regular communication with information, updates, and resources by email um, through the district's and also through the district's YouTube channel, the Eagle News, um, on a weekly basis at a minimum. And all correspondence will be made accessible and available on the district's COVID-19 page. Plus, each school site will also have a direct link to that COVID-19, the district's COVID-19 page from their school's website. So you should be able to find the information whether you visit your school's website or you visit the district's website. Um, please note now the following dates and times of the upcoming Board of Education meetings. Now these meetings will continue to be conducted virtually until county um, guidance allows for in-person public hearing uh, gatherings. 
October 6th is a regularly scheduled board meeting, uh, you, it, which will uh, typically starts in the open session at 5 p.m. and with an open uh, with a closed session starting at 5 p.m. and the open session starting at 6 p.m. And you can always visit our schedule to verify and confirm that those are the times that we're going to be starting. Um, now on October 14th, this is the one I had mentioned earlier. This is going to be a workshop and the workshop will begin from 8.30 a.m all the way through till three o'clock p.m. Uh, and then uh, followed by November 4th on 2020, November 4th, 2020, there will be another board workshop starting again at 8.30 a.m. all the way through till 3 p.m. So you can check out that information again by going to our board meeting schedules. Um, again, it's always just good to go there to either a, uh, check and confirm the, the, the time that the board meetings are gonna start um, and also, if you want to provide public comment, the link will be there for you to be able to enter that information um, online. Now, let's look at the county and state update. The Sacramento County Department of Public Health has released new numbers. Um, as of September 25th, there are 22,183 confirmed cases of COVID-19 and 406 deaths. Again, this is Sacramento County. Now, by age group of the positive cases, in the age group of 0 through 9, there are 780 positive cases. In the age group of 10 to 19, 1,679 have been reported. In the age group of 20 to 29, 4,723 have been reported. In the age group of 30 to 39, the age group of fourth, um, that age group, there have been 4,284 COVID cases reported. And in age group 40 to 49, 3,618. And in the age group of 50 to 59, there have been 3,092 cases reported. In the category 60, uh, 60 years and over, the total of 3,194 cases have been uh, reported in. Now, across California, there are 794,040 confirmed COVID cases with, unfortunately, 15,398 deaths. Now, more than 14 million people in the state of California have been tested to date. Now, in addition to today's update, Ego News um, also held a couple of Q&A interviews about the social and emotional learning training that we will be providing for school site staff. And then we've also have another interview um, where you can learn about the district's free and reduced meal program and make sure we want to make sure that parents also in that interview we wanted to make sure that parents also understood how important it is to still turn in their free and reduced meal program forms it's something we do every year so take a look at those two interviews they're they're interesting it gives you a chance to talk or to hear from our subject matter experts and uh, learn about updates and things that are going on in other areas of of the district and to hear these interviews, all you have to do is visit the links noted below in the description area. Okay, thank you for your ongoing support, not only of the district, but of each other. Um, as we await our reopening, which I know many of you are very anxious about, we ask that you remain vigilant. Please remain vigilant about wearing a face mask, maintaining social distance, and hand washing. If you haven't already logged into your parent view portal to check your students' grades by now, attendance, and communication from their teacher, please do so. Um, we've provided information in our letter and we'll have it also here again in the, in the comment areas below of where you can learn uh, on more about parent view, that parent view portal, and how to sign up to get into parent view, how to log in. Please monitor your email inbox for ongoing school and district updates now, and be sure to visit our website at www.egusd.net. That's where we provide a lot of updates. So that's it for your EGO News um, update, and remember to subscribe to the Elk Grove Unified District's YouTube channel and click on that little bell uh, icon so that you can receive our notifications. I'm Santi Pinkerton. Stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you.